Hello, good evening, and welcome to News at 10 on TV3. My name is Martin Nasiedu Date. Coming up this evening, most parts of Accra floods after about six hours of rain in the capital and surrounding areas. Also in this bulletin, Strategic Thinkers Network, Stranek, calls for full publication of the ML Shot Commissioning Report. This and many more coming up on News at 10 this evening. Time now, though, for highlights. Most Ghanaian women with cervical cancer do not survive the disease as a result of reporting late to health facilities for treatment with their conditions at advanced stages. Health experts are advocating the training of more health workers to intensify cervical cancer screening in hard-to-reach communities. Two Ghanaian brothers, Isaac Otu and Jacob Labi, construct a light aircraft using local materials. The brothers want the world to know it is possible to manufacture planes in Ghana. Commuting and access to health facilities in Krachi, Pandai, Wulensi and Nakpaili is now easier as the bad roads have been tarred. Government released funds for the reconstruction of the Krachi, Pandai, Wulensi, Binda Road to TV3's mission's constant report on the bad state of the major road. The Seychelles president goes below the surface of the Indian Ocean to call for better protection for the world's seas. Danny Ford said that a healthy ocean was crucial for the survival of humanity in a broadcast made 124 meters, that is 406 feet below sea level. He had joined a British-led expedition exploring the ocean's depths. And uh, so those are the highlights from within and without the country. Time now for the big one. Now, heavy rains over the last few hours have caused most parts of the capital to flood. Some parts uh, of the national capital, Accra, are flooded following about five hours of rains uh, that started around the hours of 2 p.m. this afternoon on Sunday, April the 14th. The rain and its resulting floods consequently caused massive traffic in the capital and other areas. According to the Ghana Meteorological Agency, this year would witness a lot of rains, which would make it, um, uh, and the nation needs to be aware of that and the fact that there's also the possibility of floods in most parts of the capital. You would recall that somewhere last week, after about 45 minutes of rain, five people lost their lives. And today's rain that uh, went several hours, there is a possibility that some places may have been seriously flooded as well. And uh, we've asked you on social media, on my Facebook page and on the page of TV3 Ghana, to let us know where you are and how the, today's rains have affected you. And I will be happy to read some of your comments out shortly. But um, let's, let's go on to the phone lines now and speak to um, Nanayao Akwada. He is the Executive Secretary of the Bureau of Public Safety. And those last two words are of very prime importance, public safety. To find out from him what, as individuals, we can do in these uh, rainy days to be safe. Good evening, Mr. Akwada, and thank you for joining us. Good evening, Martin, and um, good evening to your viewers. The designation is executive director and not executive secretary. Right. Thank uh, thanks for the correction. And to start with, I believe you've also experienced today's rains. Uh, what can you tell us from where you are and whether or not you've also had reports of floods? Well, I've been um, indoors at the office um, since sometime around midday. So I had the weather warning on Google, and then um, that one from Meteo Department also came. I, and I was never out until after 7 p.m. And so when I came, everything was peaceful. I'm sure wherever there was flash floods, the flash floods would have passed already. So it's just on WhatsApp that I'm also um, seeing some of the scenes playing out in Accra and elsewhere. 
Right. And from your position as executive director for uh, the Bureau of Public Safety, how can we as individuals, what role do we have to play when it comes to safety and natural uh, occurrences? We wouldn't want to call it a natural disaster, but these natural occurrences come again, quote unquote, naturally. But what can we do as citizens to be safe? Well, basically, in times like these, what we always say is we should always take the weather with us. So it wouldn't hurt to find out what the weather is going to be like today in the morning. Um, with our smartphones now, it's easy by the click of a button or by just, um, you know, posting that query on Google or in some cases, those of you using other uh, more smart devices like iOS, you could ask Siri what the weather is going to be, or you could ask Cortana what the weather is going to be, or Alexa what the weather is going to be. And once you have an idea of what the weather is going to be, you can plan against it. Also, it's important to um, take weather notices as and when they are issued very seriously and try and put your schedule within. If you live in low-lying area or in an area where it is prone to flooding, it's important that around this time you start building community resilience. You start knocking on doors, find out in the event that this rain come down and it runs for hours, what mm -hmm. as a community you want to do and begin to act now before the rains come down, you know, for prolonged periods. It's very, very important that we do not act in isolation, but we act in concert with our community members at any point in time. And, and, and that links it to my next question. That has to do with the fact that um, there are those who are calling for an, a, a replanning or re-engineering of our roads, our drains, and some of the major gutters we have in the country, and especially uh, uh, flood-prone areas. What is your take on that, and how can that be done so it does not disrupt daily activity? Well, I think um, in the first place, we must understand that um, there's, there's, there's just so much that we as a people can do when it comes to flooding. One, we have to take the issue of solid waste management seriously. Once we take the issue of solid waste, serious, uh, solid waste management seriously, more than 50% of the problem will be handled. Then we can look at uh, the issue of drains and the silting and so on and so forth. Right. Unfortunately, official now has made it look all like once we have bigger drains, then the issue of flooding will be curtailed. That is not true. We must begin to look at the human factors. Once we deal with the human factors, the problem will be more than halved. And that's one aspect we need to understand. Right. And then when it, it comes to redesigning and re-engineering, of course, as the population explodes, as uh, activities, you know, um, evolve, we must continually be uh, redesigning and uh, re, if you like, re-engineer mm. our dreams and our covers, our roads, etc. Right. Okay, we would have to leave it here for now. We'll definitely be coming back to you for uh, some other stories that we have this evening. But uh, thank you for your time uh, this evening. Um, David Aquada is the Executive Director for the Bureau of Public Safety. Let's go and pick some of the comments that you have been sending in on TV3, my, my, my personal Facebook page. So I asked where people were and what they were experiencing. And these are some of the comments that have come in. Uh, Cub Savage says he is at Nungwa. The whole area is in a mess and uh, he could not even go out to buy anything. Some people are taking the un un unfortunate advantage to dump refuse into the gutters. And so that is also making it choke. Mohamed Seydou says he's in Kumase and it is very bad. Amit Mensah says the Butre Road is terrible. Abena Nyaku says I'm in Kumase, it's still raining. But thank God, people, uh, nothing bad has happened so far. Um, Pascaling Sektar says I was drenched in the rain going home after lectures earlier today. Samuel Butre says I'm home in Ashaman, Lebanon, uh, he's safe. And uh, Felix Boating says serious, but my brother got home from uh, his place. It was bad, he couldn't enter his room 
Uh, that is uh, Firestone behind the mountains of fire. Uh, Church. Felix Boating says, Medina, Libya, Cortes. Thank God everything is going on, but it is still rainy. And Sir Elam says, Teshi is badly flooded. I'm stuck in my room right now. Pram Pram in my room, Suzanne Matt is saying, Regina Amega says, Adenta Commando, area got so flooded, my Uber got stuck in the middle of the road, had to remove my shoes and walk home with rain at almost knee level. That is Terrible. And um, uh, Godson Abusa says, at a flow and was seriously beaten by the rain at a program, but safe. So those are some of the comments that have come in uh, when I asked on Facebook where people were and what some of the things they were uh, experiencing regarding the rain. So thank you for sending these messages in. And certainly we know that in the coming days, um, We'll see what the national or state institutions are doing about it. We'll also be speaking to NADMO. Um, they said they had calls, went around the uh, the, some parts of the city to ascertain the first hand, uh, for first hand what was happening. Uh, they are on the field. We'll be getting uh, some information from them as well shortly. But this is the big one on News at 10. Stay with us. We have more coming up shortly. Thank you for staying with TV3. This is News at 10. Let's go on to some other stories this evening. The Tema Motorway forms an integral part of the Trans-African Highway stretching from Lagos through Lomé, Accra and Abidjan to Dakar and effectively serves as the junction to the sub-region. Transportation-related accidents on the Tema Motorway is on the increase. The Bureau of Public Safety is calling for the redesign and reclassification of the Tema motorway. Now, uh, the Japanese government is providing funding of approximately $55.6 million through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, for an upgrade of the Tema motorway. And with this uh, recent concern of having to expand it and looking at the fact that even within Ghana, even within Accra uh, and Tema, uh, there seem to be it's one of the major corridors that a lot of vehicles use. So is this call justified? And um, why the need at this time? We've been joined by Nanaya Akwada. Um, uh, he's the uh, Executive Director for the Bureau of Public Safety. Good evening. Once again, we spoke to you a few minutes ago. But um, there has been a research on the need to redesign and reclassify the Tema Motorway. But what has prompted this particular reason? And what do you say is justifiable reason why we have to expand it? Well, um, Martin, I think that I did not get the first part of your question. If you don't mind and you want to repeat that for me, I'll be grateful. I'm asking that uh, there has been some sort of a research to justify why there need to be the redesigning and reclassification of the Tema Moto. And I'm asking that from your perspective, how would this increase the need and the use of that stretch? Well, thank you. Um, basically, let me just run viewers through a few statistics um, coming out of the survey that we conducted between um, January and March. One, we did indicate that based on our survey, we discovered 45 unauthorized u turns, out of which some 24 were blocked and other 21 new tents were effectively being uh, used by cars, minibuses, tricycles, and, and motorcycles. We further counted over 230 footpaths, listing the median. And we think that these are many more. We listed nine observations that we think are, are very disturbing. And con for as long as these things continue to be present on the motorway, they are posing a hazard to um, users of this route. On, on, by the day, we know from statistics from 2008 that it, over 65,000 cars ply this route daily. We cannot ignore 
the over 65,000 cars that are applying this route at the peril of their lives. So it's important that we bring this to the attention of the state to, as it were, like we indicated, to redesign and reclassify the motorway to an urban highway, which will give them the opportunity to introduce street lights, yeah, sorry, traffic lights, pedestrian crossings, bus stops, and allow for arterial and local roads to link the motorway. Martin, it will interest you to know that just by counting the access points by both sides of the of the stretch, both the Tema to Accra and Accra to Tema, we counted 28 access points on the Tema to Accra stretch. Only six of them were restricted or blocked. But are these legitimate the entry points onto the motorway? I, th I think that is one other thing that we need to talk about. The fact that people seem it or deem it fit if their homes are closer to the motorway they just start branching and then gradually that becomes another route that you know other road you other vehicles use is it that the state institutions or the ghana highways authority for instance is not properly checking the use of the motorway well if effectively so which is why we in our in our in our letter to the minister we indicated that they should read fine with immediate effect the buffer zone along the motorway and maintain same by removing or relocating all encroachers. You realize that people have now they've allowed, we've allowed development to actually you know breach or um, enter into the buffer zone of the motorway. And so we'll be seeing some of these things. As a matter of fact, if we are saying we discovered 45 unauthorized u turns 24 were blocked and another 21 have been created and effectively being used what it tells us is that when the route is created mm. the state blocks it then the people create another so as many as are created that are blocked will be recreated so we think that it's about time that as a nation we begin to live with the reality of the situation that we've created right. to save lives. Okay. Uh, I'm sure in the subsequent uh, bulletins and in the coming days, this will be quite topical. But thank you for making time to speak with us. Nanaya Akwada, Executive Director of the um, uh, Bureau of Public Safety. The Tema Motorway, one of Ghana's busiest roads, needs extra attention, extra work, extra expansion. But would that happen? Those that are living there, they need to be cleared. Would that happen? would we'll ask these questions when we get the minister also on this topic. Let's move on to some other stories. Now, the Emil Schott Commission of Inquiry has presented its report to President Akufuado uh, at the Jubilee House in Accra. Now, the point is the setting up of the commission by the president on February 16 was necessitated by the unfortunate riots that occurred at the Ayaso West Wagon constituency by election on January 31, after the sudden death of the member of parliament of that constituency, Emmanuel Chermating Ejakum. The commission, chaired by the uh, former chair of the former commissioner of the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Justice Francis Emil Short, had Mrs. Henrietta Mensa Bonzo, a distinguished law professor of the international of international repute, and Patrick K. Echampong, a former IGP, as members. Ernest Abochi, a private legal practitioner, was the secretary to that commission. And uh, the commission was to identify any persons responsible for or who uh, had been involved in the events associated with the violence and injuries uh, and also inquire into any matter which the commission considers um, incidental or reasonably related to the course of the event and the associated violence and injuries. And uh, you would recall that here on TV3's News at 10, we brought you some of the recommendations made by the commission, one of which is that the man in question whose name was mentioned by the uh, member of parliament for Pram Pram, uh, the person of Double, who is a national security operative, the report uh, from the commission said that Double be uh, taken out of his position and uh, reprimanded. And then also um, uh, Brian Echampong, who is the uh, Minister of State 
uh, at the presidency in charge of national security be also reprimanded and be uh, made to take ultimate responsibility. He was also, according to the report, supposed to um, be given a clearly defined role. So his role and that of the national security minister be clearly defined. So, and, um, uh, so those are some of the recommendations. And we just want to bring your attention to some of the issues here that we have picked up from um, the report. So you would know that on the 3rd of January, violence broke out and some masked men uh, went to the Labaleshi uh, Primary School polling station where I also West Wagomba election was supposed to have been held. And from that election, 16 people were injured. At least um, a three-member commission of inquiry was constituted and taxed to investigate the matter. The ML Short Commission has presented its report to the president. And I was just mentioning some of the recommendations they made to you. And an institution called Stranek is asking that the full report be made public. TV3 and uh, MG, for that matter, got bits and pieces and snippets of the leaked report, one of which is that Brian Echampo, who is the president, uh, works at the presidency uh, in charge of national security at the presidency, was asked to be, uh, according to the report, he should be reprimanded. And we're trying uh, to get Ni Tete. Ni Tete Tete. He's executive director of Stranek uh, Thinkers Network to give us his position on why they think it is prudent to make this uh, report public and what they make of their recent recommendations that have been made by the commission. Another is that Double, who was said to have been at the scene and fired into the home of the NDC member of parliament, uh, NDC uh, rep who was standing on the ticket of the party there, is also being asked to be reprimanded by the report. Also, Brian Echampong, uh, I mentioned his uh, already. And then also DSP Azugu, who became popular. You would recall that he came before the commission and people took to social media following some of the presentation he made before the commission. The, uh, the report, according to um, um, the recommendations, he is to be reassigned and taken from his current position as the head of the SWAT team at the National Security Secretariat and uh, be reassigned by the IGP and be taken from a commanding position or a position where he has authority to give command because he failed, according to the report, failed to give clear guidelines as to why and what the committee, or the, the, the SWAT team that went there, what they were supposed to do. The report also asked that every SWAT activity or SWAT team at the National Security Secretariat or in the National Security Apparatus be scrapped and be disbanded. Would these recommendations made by the committee, the commission, be uh, appended by the president to be in full force? We'll keep an eye on it and give you posted. We are unable to get uh, the Stranach Executive Director on the line, but um, they are asking for the full report to be published and definitely would, uh, when we do get uh, except of it, we'll put it out for you. This is News at 10 on TV3. Stay with us. We'll be back with more. All right, so do visit our website, 3news.com. We have published the um, except of the report we've gotten from the commission that was set up by the president. And then also uh, the story about the floods. You can find it there and other stories that are making rounds in Ghana and around the world. It is 3news.com. That's how we wrap up the bulletin. Thank you very much for watching. Do have a good evening and as always, stay positive and stay safe. Bye for now.